Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. This video is made possible by the very kind donations of viewers like you. Thank you. If you are in a position to help this channel improve quality and grow, please visit my Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Okay guys, before we get started today, I just wanted to let you know this is something of a themed episode. I found a whole box of this stuff. So uh, let's uh, open it up and take a look. I'll start with the kind of, I guess, boring stuff first. This was a whole box of Star Trek stuff. So first off, I have the AMT uh, instructions for the Galileo 2. Uh, as you can see, it's from 1991. Uh, this is how the Galileo model went together. I had a few of these models that I used more as toys than anything else. I've got stickers for Klingon ships here. As you can see, it's uh, 93 Playmates. They never made it onto the Klingon ship. Got an iron-on patch of the Starfleet Command Delta. Actually, it might be so on. Some more decals for that Klingon battlecruiser. A sticker for the 25th anniversary of Star Trek. Uh, here is a paper that came with the Playmates USS Enterprise D toy. As you can see, it's uh, done like L cars and shows you some of the features here. Got a similar page for the Romulan Warbird toy. Tells you about the Warbird. Very cool. Kind of blueprint L cars. Um, a little instruction sheet for the Klingon uh, battle cruiser here. How to put the batteries in and stuff so it makes noise. Same sheet for the Romulan Warbird, where to put the batteries and the buttons and stuff. Here's the little blue sheet for the Klingon, uh, well, I guess, attack cruiser, the Forcha. I don't think I ever actually disconnected the uh, battle module. Huh, didn't even know about that as a kid. All right, another uh, 25th anniversary sticker. Stickers for the Enterprise D. Join the official Star Trek fan club. <laughs> uh, another one telling you how to put the Enterprise together and put the batteries. Man, I'm such a nerd. More stickers for the Enterprise D. These are stickers for the AMT original uh, Enterprise. As you can see, all the different options for names and for the registry numbers and stuff. If you want it to be more than just the Enterprise. Uh, here's the AMT Vorcha model. Uh, the instructions about how to put it together and stuff. I guess I still have this somewhere. Uh, here's the Klingon Battlecruiser, the old TOS Battlecruiser for AMT. Um, I know I had this and played with it a lot. It, it, it's it gone. It was broken and everything. I threw it away a while back. It was just absolutely... Oh, yep, there's the decals for the Galileo. Anyway, uh, yeah, this thing's already gone. It, it was just destroyed as a kid. Here's the Enterprise AMT model sheet. Uh, same deal. Uh, I played with this a lot and it was like broken and stuff and glued back together and broken again. Cool snippet on the back about the Enterprise. Heavy cruiser, starship, how you put it together and stuff. Yep, 
all the different registry numbers for the different uh, Constitution class ships. I wonder if that's still canon. Now we move on to Lipton Ice T. Or it's not obviously that. It, these are Star Trek like trading cards. Um, I'll go through some of these. Season one of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yep, season one, Jordy. Just snippets from the show that they used to sell in these packs. I don't even know what set these are from. Clearly, they're all from uh, Ah Judgment. Ugh. I uh, got some cool comic book ones. Now that's later in the series, season three or four or something. Yep, back to season one. And then OG Star Trek. Uh, that's from a comic book. These are more art drawings of stuff. That Devil in the Dark, Journey to Babel, Mock Time. I wonder if these are like from a comic book or something. Uh, that must be from a novel. There's from a comic book. Another comic book. Another comic book. Yeah, check off. Uhura, an Andorian, McCoy, Kirk, Gorin. As you can see, it's just a bunch of characters and just random stuff from Star Trek from these different packs that I guess my mom used to buy me or something. And then these trading cards, which uh, I have an idea where these came from. And we'll be getting to that soon, along with uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. I know where those came from. So first up here, I have Riker. William T. Riker. Uh, they, he's from Season 2. You can tell there from the packaging and stuff. He came with this little carrying case. Now inside, the little pad uh, comes out. Pad here. I think the diagnostic tool or something is what the package calls it. You got a phaser. A lot of the figures came with this phaser. Not bad. Pretty cool looking. And then this little. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea where this is from. Some kind of tool. Uh, Riker looks pretty cool. He's from second season with his beard. Yep, got the Riker. They came with figure stands, which were cool foot kind of goes in there and you got to kind of be choosy which foot you use these things are not balanced very well to stand and they're kind of a pain in the butt to get on the figure stand yep there you go and let's just take a look at him closer here not a bad job of uh, Frank's here uh, as you can see he's got okay articulation you know uh, hand moves all the way around bicep shoulder and elbow same thing with the other arm shoulder elbow and bicep and then the legs don't move very much uh, torso will twist all the way around and then he's got kind of weird sitting with his legs Pretty good for Jonathan Franks. Uh, you can tell that it's uh, early because he's still got the stripe, the badge there. Now this little pouch, I never understood what it was for. It won't hold anything. Like the phaser won't go in there. Like That looks retarded. The closest thing I can figure is, is that... Uh, you're supposed to open this up and maybe it's for the pad it looks too big though like the pad looks too big and then this thing isn't gonna fit so that I, it's for a tricorder is what it's for but he doesn't come with a tricorder and it's weird because like the the black doesn't continue on the back of his of his figure there on that one arm he can't hold much of anything in his other hand he can hold his phaser pretty good like but it it points up in the air like you can get it in there 
and he'll hold on to it and it's like eh like he holds it kind of weird he can kind of sort of hold his little tool thing here I guess I don't know not as impressed as G.I. Joe articulation let's take a look at his card here let's see it was at Walmart he was 480 something at Commander William T. Riker Star Trek The Next Generation second season uniform uh yeah anyway uh, got the cross sail on the back here, and as you can see, that's where some of those uh, art, the uh, cards came from. Got the gear that it's with, and then uh, his profile down here. He likes 3D chess. Not too bad. Next up, I have Troy, Deanna Troy, Counselor Deanna Troy here. Uh, she came with several accessories. You first got this little bag thing, which I guess is supposed to be a medical bag uh, tricorder, which they put this little loop on to make it stay in their hands better. Got another pad. Oh, careful. I uh, got another pad here, and they also put a loop on it. And then uh, the uh, desk computer. This thing was always cool back to see with them working on it and stuff. Um, I wish more of the figures had come with this thing. It's cool. All right. Uh, of course, she came with her figure stand. And then, you know, she doesn't... Her articulation is good, but the hair gets in the way. She can't turn her head very much. Uh, her arm will go all the way around. Bends at the elbow, bends at the bicep all the way around. Same thing with the other arm. She will turn her waist all the way around. And again, her legs are kind of weird. They go out in weird directions. It will go all the way around, and it does bend at the knee. Pretty good look for Marina Sirtis here. Got that weird bodysuit that she liked to wear. I like the blue one better, this weird maroon color. Here we have, again, it looks like it was $4.83 at Walmart. Yep, uh, from the first seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation. And it says in her second uniform, you can see the cross cell on the back, same as the last one, pretty much. You've got her accessories and a bit about her, and it's from Playmates. Not a bad card back. Next up, we have Worf. Yeah, Worf. He came with his Batliff, of course, though it's kind of off red for some reason whatever uh, he came with a phaser this came with a lot of figures his sword and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of this thing the uh, Klingon knife that they all have this was seen a lot if the uh, camera will cooperate it's got some detail on it very cool and a tricorder. A red tricorder, but eh, whatever, it's still a tricorder. And of course, his figure stand. Wharf. I have, in my experience, I couldn't really get him to fit on the figure stand very well. Looks good. Later episodes. His head turns pretty good, but the beard gets in the way some. He's got more like this gorilla pose. Now, he still has the articulation of the other figures. So he has pretty good range of movement with his arms, even though they're kind of out to the side there. He does spin all the way around at his waist, and he still has the weird leg thing. Now, his legs won't go quite all the way around. They get stuck there, uh, and he does look weird when he's sitting or something. Pretty good 
likeness to uh, Michael Dorn, I think is his name. But looks pretty good from the show. He's got his uh, bandolier there. Now, he also has the uh, little pouch here. And again, like the phaser won't fit. Just like with Riker. The knife won't fit. Clearly the bat lifted sword won't fit. Um, well, where'd it go? Ah, oh, there it is. It's hiding from me. But the, uh, the tricorder, if you do it right, it... it it will kind of go in there, even though the tricorder is open. You can put it in there like that. Kind of take it out, flip it around. Make it look like that, but it still looks retarded because it's open. <laughs> but at least his pouch has a use. Now his hand here is kind of a waste. Um, you know, he'll hold his sword in his other hand just fine. He'll hold his bat lift in the other hand. You can even play with it some. It looks pretty good. He'll hold his his phaser, though it's, uh, he's wanting to shoot it straight up. You, it, it, you have to position the arm really weird for him to get it to shoot forward. Now, these things don't fit in his other hand. You know, he'll hold the knife, but his other hand won't hold the knife. It's just, it won't go in. I'm not in any hurry to break anything. So he's got all these accessories, but only one hand to hold them. Now, whatever. Let's take a look at the card back. Kind of the same as the others. Doesn't have the Walmart sticker on it. We got a slightly different cross sell back here. More modern figures. And we've got Picard and his little jacket thing. Worf's personnel card thing here. His file card, if you want to call it that. Not bad. Not bad. Next up, we have Data. Everybody's favorite character was Data. Uh, he came with a phaser, a lot like a lot of other ones did. But they put this little loop on it to uh, make it easier for the figure to hold. He's got this uh, technical device that I have no idea what it is. But he will hold it. Um, whatever. And he's got a little tricorder here. It's much smaller than Worf's. And it does have this little loop. And of course he has his figure stand. Data. Now he has the articulation that we've seen up until this point. You know, he can look... Right and left. His arm will turn all the way around. Bend at the elbow. Spin at the bicep. Same thing with the other arm. Though, with the way his hand is, it's kind of weird, but it still works. He will spin around all the way at the waist. And his legs will go all the way around. And uh, he does bend at the knee. okay for Brent Spiner. As you can see here, there's some added extras. He's got this little panel on his back so you can get to the circuits underneath. In several episodes, uh, one in particular, he would open up his wrist and, and work on stuff or pull parts out to uh, upgrade his phaser. Let's look at the card back here. I think this was from Kmart. Got the more updated cross sell on here. All of his features. Riker looking all tore up there. Got Data's file card or whatever. Yep, still a nice card back. Next up, I have two weapons or two items here, but. Uh, and a little bit of an extra here. I got O'Brien, Chief O'Brien. 
This is his next generation version. Or I guess his very first appearance in Deep Space Nine or something. I've got these two items, these two accessories left, so I'm assuming they're his. I don't have the card back. His head doesn't turn very much. And he's got the articulation that was pretty standard for the others. He can uh, go all the way around at the shoulder, bend at the elbow, spin at the bicep. He will spin all the way around at the waist. And like the others, his legs are kind of weird. They will spin all the way around, and he bends at the knee. O'Brien was cool because he was in the very first episode of Star Trek The Next Generation and lasted all the way till the end of Deep Space Nine. And here we have something of a glory shot. Got all the figures together with their card backs and as a collection. This thing, you know, I played with it some as a kid. It was always kind of weird. Star Trek is kind of weird to have as a toy. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm not going to keep these. I'm going to try to sell these to somebody that loves Star Trek and wants the toys. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching my very nerdy look at my very nerdy Star Trek toys. Um, I do have some of the ships. They're in a box somewhere. At some point, I'm going to pull those out and show them to you. Did you have Star Trek toys? Did you understand... Star Trek toys being marketed to kids. It's not really an adventure show. It's more of a drama, you know, adventure, like pr solving problems and working together more than it is like getting into fights and stuff that kids would be interested in. Still, these things were fun to have and in a way I wish I had more of them so I could play with them more. There's only so much you can do with everybody being on the same side. Didn't even have any bad guys for them to fight. I played with the ships a lot more. The ships is where my heart was as a kid. and To this day, even though I've grown to have a, a, a much deeper love of Star Trek and its themes and its stories and its characters, especially Deep Space Nine, um, you know, I still admit, I get giggly when I see the ships fly across the screen and start shooting at each other, as long as it's done well. Well, what do you think? Let me know below. And as always, I hope you enjoy battle reps that are to come. Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. Thank you for watching my content. It really means a lot that you have given me the chance to entertain you. If you would like to support the channel, please visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions linked below. Also below is a link for PayPal, or links if you would like to send crypto, if that's more your thing. Please know any amount that you give will be cherished and used to upgrade equipment and improve the channel. You can also help the channel by subscribing, turning on notifications, liking, commenting, and sharing my channel with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come.